geometry students in this video, we will be learning how to find the area of regular polygons. Um, go ahead and write your heading down if you would, if you would please. Your heading today is area of regular polygons, lesson 11.4, and be sure and include today's date. Be sure and include today's date. Area of regular polygons, lesson 11.4, be sure and include today's date. Now, a formula that allows you to find the area of any regular polygon period, okay? But before we do that, we are going to look specifically at a regular triangle formula first. Then we will transition to a formula that works on all regular polygons, okay? So to sum that up, we're looking at two formulas today, okay? One of them is for a triangle, a regular triangle and the other one is for all regular polygons. When you are given a regular triangle, you can find the area by using this formula. By the way, a regular triangle is another name for an I, um, is another name for an equilateral triangle or an equiangular triangle. If you have an equiangular triangle or an equilateral triangle or a regular triangle, they're all the same, all three of those, okay? Here's the formula. 1 fourth times the square root of 3 times S squared. Copy that in your notes, please, and make note that S stands for the side of the regular triangle. So please copy that down. The area of a regular triangle or an equilateral triangle or an equiangular triangle is 1 fourth square root of 3 times side squared. Name I say, Mr. Jared, I thought the area of a triangle of formula was this. Well, it is, and this will work on any triangle. But if you have a regular triangle, and all that you know is the length of the side, you can use this formula right here, okay? So please copy that in your notes. Now, <clears throat> you do not have to take notes of this unless you want to. But I'm going to very quickly show you where, you where they got this formula from, okay? Again, please take notes if you want to. Or you can just kind of watch. I'm going to go really fast. Okay, this is an equilateral triangle or a regular triangle. So all the sides are the same. So we're going to call all of these sides S. Then I'm going to drop down an altitude right here. Like this. And of course, when I do that, we can call this S over 2. S divided by 2. Now, remember, the normal formula for the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, okay? Now, we know the base is S. This entire side right here is your base, and we can put S in there, okay? The height, however, think about it, guys. This is a 60-60-60 triangle. So right here, we have a 30. Here, we have a 60. We learned a long time ago, and again, if you're lost on this, don't worry about it, I'm going really fast. But for those that are really into geometry slash trigonometry, you remember the shorter leg. Um, you can always find the longer leg in a 30, 60, 90 triangle by taking this right here and multiplying it by square root of 3. So if I take S over 2 times square root of 3 over 1, you get this. The length of this height right here is square root of 3. S over 2. So put that in for H right here. Square root of 3 S over 2. Now put the S over 1 and multiply everything together. Okay. 1 times S times square root of 3 S would be square root of 3 S squared. Okay. And then 2 times 1 times 2 would be 4. square root of 3 
plus squared, okay? Copy this problem down. I want you to find the area of an equilateral triangle that has size of length 5, okay? Size of length 5. Well, I mean, if it's an equilateral triangle, that means it's a regular triangle, okay? So, all that I need to do, listen to me carefully, students, all that I need to know when it comes to finding the area of a regular triangle or an equilateral triangle or an equiangular triangle is the length of the side. And, that, and I give that to you right here. The length of the side is 5. So with the S is we put a 5. So we have 1 fourth times square root of 3 times 5 squared. Okay. So 5 times 5 is 25. We really have 1 fourth times the square root of 3 times 25. So grab your calculators. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to type into my calculator 0.25 times the square root of 3 equals times 25 equals. And you'll get this right here for your answer. 10.83 square units. So guys, it's pretty easy to use. The formula is but you can only use this formula when you have a regular triangle or an equilateral triangle or an equiangular triangle. But know this formula, okay? And then lastly, most of these videos are pretty short in this chapter. And this one's going to be pretty short also. Let's look now at a formula that works for any regular polygon, okay? First, we need to learn two definitions of two terms that are used in this formula, okay? So if you don't learn these two definitions, well, first of all, let me say this. You are not responsible for these two definitions. I am not going to put these on a test or a quiz as fill in the blanks. I'm not going to, but you still need to know what these words mean or you won't be able to use the formula. Okay, so here we go. <coughs> <coughs> It can be any two consecutive words. 
vertices. You could draw a line here and a line here, and this would be a central angle. And all of those angles are congruent, by the way. Okay, all right. Now, moving on, um, all of those central angles are congruent within this regular hexagon. All right, and by the way, well, I'll get into that later. Okay, now, having gone over these terms, here's the formula. So please copy this formula down. It's a really small, simple formula. It's very simple. One half times A times P. Now you need to know what each one of these words stands for, okay? A stands for the apothem. Okay. A stands for the apothem. And a capital P stands for the perimeter of the entire figure. Okay? The perimeter of the entire figure. Alright, here's the formula. This formula right here, students, will give you the area of any regular polygon, period. Any regular concave polygon. Convex polygon. The area of any convex regular polygon can be found by this formula here. Now, um, let's apply this to one problem. Before I do, let me go back. Let me just very quickly try to show you where they get this formula from. And again, I want you to pay attention. I want you to listen. However, um, I'm not going to test you on this, but I would still like you to listen, okay? So here we go. If I draw a triangle like this, we know the area would be, um, we'll call this side, um, the area of this triangle would be this whole side right here. We'll call it S times the height right here, okay? Now, of course, for A, so I'm going to go ahead and put A for apathy apathem, okay, because that's what it is. So, we know in order to find the area of this triangle here, it'd be one half times A times the side right here, S, okay? That's pretty simple. Now, how many of these triangles are in this regular hexagon? Six. If it's six sides, it's got six triangles, so you'd multiply this whole thing by six. Now remember, when you're taking 6 times 1 half times A times S, you can multiply these in any order, okay? So I'm going to arrange the order to look like this. 1 half times A times 6S. And now if you think about it, guys, 6 times S means you take this length right here and multiply it by 6. Well, that would be the perimeter, would it not? S times S times 6, S plus S plus S plus S plus S plus X, S. That would be 6 times S. That's the perimeter. So now you have 1 half times A times the perimeter. What's the exact formula you have here? Now, I'm not going to make you proof that on the test or quiz. If I lost you there, it's okay. But some students in the class who have a really high math IQ like to know why. <coughs> so that is why this formula. Now let's go ahead and solve one problem, and we're finished for the for this video, okay? I want you to find the area of a regular pentagon that is inscribed in a circle with a radius of 3. So the first thing you want to do is get a picture of this, okay? We're going to find the area of a regular pentagon, so we know right away we can use this formula here, that is inscribed in a circle with a radius of 3. So I've got a picture of that here for you. There it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my radius of 3, okay? So it goes right to the edge of the circle, which would also go right to the vertex of a regular, of my regular pentagon. So that's a 3. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop right now, and I'm just going to get rid of this circle. I mean, the only good that this circle served me was to tell me I had a radius of 3. Well, once I knew I had a radius of 3, that tells me that all the lengths from the center of my pentagon to the vertex right here are going to be 3. So now that I know that, I really don't need the circle. Okay? So hold on one second. Alright, let's get rid of this circle here. There we go. 
So now I'm doing pretty good. I know these two sides here both have a length of 3. Okay, that should be pretty obvious to see. So to use this formula, I have to know what A is. I have to know what P is. Well, A, of course, is the distance drawn from the center right down the middle like this. That's going to cut this in half. Okay, so the next thing I need to do, students, is realize that I have five angles in this pentagon. One, two, three, four, five. And all those angles are congruent because I have a regular pentagon. Now, what is the sum of all those five angles? Well, remember how to find that, guys. Take really good notes, please. How do I find the sum of all those five angles? Well, this formula here, where the n is but a five, five minus two is three, 180 times 3 is 540. So all five of these interior angles have to add up to 540. Okay? Now, divide that by 5, and you're going to get 108. Okay? So all of these angles right here are 108. Okay? Now, let's get this triangle drawn off to the side over here so we can see it a little better. Okay? There's my triangle. There's my line coming straight down. This is 3. This is three. Now, do you see this angle right here? This whole angle is 108. Well, it's obvious in a regular polygon. When you draw a line from this to the center, it's going to cut the angle in half. So that means this angle right here is 54 degrees. That means this angle right here is 54 degrees. All right? So if this angle here is 54 degrees, then I know this angle right here would have to be 36 degrees. Because 36 plus 50 is 90, and 90 plus 90 is 180. All right? So if I'm going too fast, pause, back it up, and watch again, OK? But I realized because my circle had a radius of 3, I knew right away that these lengths here were 3, OK? Then I knew, after that, I could find the sum of the interior angles was 540. Divide that by 5, and you get 108. Cut that in half, and this angle right here is 54, which is this angle right here, okay? And this angle here is 36, all right? So we're doing pretty well. Now, my advice, students, is to erase this part of the triangle over here. We just do not need it whatsoever. Okay. And see this side right here? I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to give it a variable, okay? I'm going to call this X. That would mean this little side right here is X right there, okay? And this height right here is my apothem. So I'm going to call it A and then put an A right here, okay? So how can I find these? Well, guys, trigonometry. Look. I'm going to circle angle 54. To be honest with you, I don't care what angle you circle, but I'm going to circle 54. If I circle 54, this is my opposite side. Here's your right angle. This is your hypotenuse, and this is your adjacent. Got it? So I can say, okay, I'm looking for A. I need to know the apothem to use this formula. So that's my opposite side. I know the hypotenuse side. I know the opposite. I know the hypotenuse. Or I'm looking for the opposite. I know the hypotenuse. So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So I'm going to say the sine of 54 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now remember, the sine of 54 is a number. It's 0 0.8090. You can use your calculator to get that, okay? 0 0.8090 equals A over 3. Now your denominator is 3, so multiply both sides by 3. When you do that, you will get 2.43. I'm going to put 2.4. 2.4 equals A. So look, you just found what A is. 2.4. You just found what A is over here. 2. So now you know your apothem. So, so far, I'm trying to find the area of this regular polygon. I have one half times A, which I now know is 2.4. The only thing left to find is the perimeter all the way around it. Well, if I can find X right here and then multiply that by 2, that would give me this whole side. Then multiply it by 5 to give me the entire perimeter. Then I'll have the entire perimeter. So let's see if we can not find X here, okay? Now, I know the hypotenuse. I don't know the adjacent side. I'm going to use cosine. Cosine.
cosine uses hypotenuse and adjacent. So if I say the cosine of 54, that's the angle I circled, equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Remember, cosine of 54 is a number. It's 0.5878. Denominator's 3, so multiply both sides by 3, and you'll get 1.76. I'm going to put 1.8 equals x. So x right here is 1.8. If you multiply that by 2, then you get the entire length of this, side, of this side right here, which would be 3.6. So if all of these sides are 3.6, and there's 5 of them, then take 3.6 times 5, and you'll have the area, which is 18. So the entire area is 18. Excuse me, the entire perimeter is 18. And now we're all set. We can take 1 half times 2.4 times 18, okay? And if you type that in correctly, you will get 21.6. So 21.6 square units. That was a very difficult problem, and I knew that it would be. And that's why, I mean, I'm keeping the videos pretty short, so you can focus most of your attention on your homework, okay? Because the homework in this section, section will be pretty challenging, all right? Now, hope that makes sense. Um, let's review quickly. If you're trying to find the area of a regular triangle, you can use this formula right here. 1 4 times the square root of 3 times s squared. If you're trying to find the area of any other regular polygon, use this formula here. Little a stands for apothem. Big capital B stands for the perimeter of the entire um, polygon. And then do your work, okay? Find the missing parts that you're missing, and then use your formula. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.